Now that we've seen all of these different properties of logarithms, let's use these to simplify some logarithms uh, without having to convert them into exponential equations. Let's see if we can make a uh, very quick work of these guys. Starting off with this. Let's say log base 8 of 32. Now in the past, we would have rewritten this and we would have said 8 to the x equals 32. It's an exponential equation and we solve it after that. But we just got done talking about the change of base theorem. And if we can recognize that these guys have the same base, then maybe it'll be a little bit easier. Now, if you had a calculator that you could use, you could just say log of 32 over log of 8. However, there is a common base here. And the common base is 2. Now, this is the same thing that you would have found if you had set this up as an exponential equation. But now we're using the change of base theorem, and check this out. What's the power of 2 that gives you 32? 5. What's the power of 2 that gives you 8? 3. And then you're done. You didn't have to solve an exponential equation. You recognize these guys have a common base, and you just work it out from there. Let's try this. Log base 25 of the seventh root of 125. Now, one of the first things we notice here is that we have a radical. So we actually have several different ways of working this out. One of the first things that we can do is that we can rewrite this to say this is 125 to the 1 7th power. And when we do this, we can now apply that property of logarithms that allows that power to come out in front. All right, so if I do that, this becomes 1 7th times log base 25 of 125. And then from here, I would say use the change of base theorem. Don't worry about the 1 over 7 right now. Worry about this stuff right here. These guys have a base that's common, and that common base is 5. So the 1 over 7 is still here in front, times, and now we do our change of base. See, I like to start by saying log of 125 over log of 25. Now, if I were using a graphing calculator, I could just type this in and, and be done. But I'm doing this without a calculator, and I'm going to show you that the common base is 5, and by putting that here, it makes very quick work of this problem. Because now, we've got 1 7th, and you know this answer. You know the power of 5 that gives you 125 is 3, and the power of 5 that gives you 25 is 2. And so, to finish this problem, you multiply these two fractions straight across, and you get 3 over 14. Now, that's not the only way to do it, but I think that's probably the most efficient way of doing that. You don't really have to struggle with fractions and, and all that jazz. You bring the power out in front, you do a change of base here for log base 25 and 125, recognizing the common base is 5, and then you're done. All right, if I have log base 59 of 1. This is one of those, uh, what I call a popcorn question. You should be able to do it very, very quickly. Not a whole lot of thinking going on. You just have to remember what's, uh, what this is asking. This is saying 59 to what power gives us 1. Well, one of the key points that we have for any logarithm is the key point 1, 0. You plug in 1 and you get out 0 because anything to the 0 power is going to give you 1, So, except for 0. So 59 to the 0 gives you 1. Remember, as a little side note here, that 0 to the 0 is undefined. So watch out for things like that. All right. How about log of 100? Well, remember, when I write just log, what does that mean? Just log means log base 
10, right? So what is the power of 10 that gives us 100? Well, the easy trick here is to count the zeros. You have two zeros, so the answer here is just two. Super easy, knock it out, then we move on. If I have log base seven, of 1 over 49. If I didn't have the fraction and we just saw this, you would say that the power of 7 that gives us 49 is 2. But since it's in the denominator, it's not 2, but it's negative 2. Because remember, the answer is the power. And what kind of powers cause you to end up in the denominator? Negative powers. Okay. And let's see what happens here. Log base 8 of 1 over 16. Hmm. Well, we have a couple of ways of looking at this. Right? So we could see this as a quotient. We could see this as doing a change of base theorem. So it's really up to you. If I do a change of base theorem, we have to be able to recognize what the common base is between what's inside the logarithm, which is going to be up here, versus the base, which goes in the denominator like this. So the common base between the 16 and the 8 is 2. So we write that in there so we know what base it is that we're working with. And then we work this out. What's the power of 2 that gives you, well it says 1 over 16, right? But really, what's the power of 2 that gives you 16? Well, it's 4. But since it's in the denominator, that means negative 4 over the power of 2 that gives you 8 is 3. And there we go. Now we got a couple more problems to, to work through. And then it can be done. Let's do log base 81 of 27. If we can recognize these guys have a common base, then we can do the change of base theorem. Okay, So the common base between these guys, this is where you have that power sheet so you can get very familiar with your powers. These guys are both based off of 3. So if I do the change of base theorem, and I say this is a base of 3 for each of these, then it becomes a very, very simple problem, right? Because in and of itself, it's hard to say what's the power of 81 that gives you 27. But if I say it like this, what's the power of 3 that gives you 27? That's 3. What's the power of 3 that gives you 81? Look on your list of powers, and the answer is 4. So, done and done, right? All right, last one. Let's take log base 49 of the eighth root of seven. So I suggest that we work this the same way we did one uh, a little bit earlier on this page. It was uh, log base 25, right? We have the radical and we pull that power out front. So uh, maybe we do that here. So I suggest that we write this. And again, remember this. That having the eighth root of 7 means that you're saying 7 to the 1 eighth, which means I can pull that power out in front like this. So the 1 eighth power goes in front. So 1 eighth times log base 49 of 7. And we can recognize there's a common base between 49 and 7 and use that change of base theorem. So a big fraction, log of 7 over log of 49, and you've got that common base of 7. So the power of 7 that gives you 7 is 1. 
and the power of 7 that gives you 49 is 2. And then finish this by doing the multiplication, and we have 1 over 16. So we use that property of logarithms to bring the power out in front, and then we did change of base theorem, and we made very, very quick work of this. Now, I do want you to know that you also could have turned this into an exponential equation. You could have said 49 to the x is equal to the eighth root of 7, in which case you would have said this is 7 squared to the x, this is 7 to the 1 eighth power, so 7 to the 2x equals 7 to the 1 eighth, and then this is just an equation that you are solving now. Because you get those guys that have the same base, you equate the powers. I can multiply both sides of this equation times 1 half. And x is equal to 1 over 16. Still the same. Man, I love logarithms. Don't you?